Welcome to India Worldwide. I'm your host, Anthony. We have with us today Taylor Neiman from Toucan. That's jointoucan.com. How are you doing today, Taylor? I'm doing so good. Thanks for having me, Anthony. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Yeah, thanks Thanks again for agreeing to hop on this call with us. Um, Toucan's a pretty cool-looking app. I haven't seen anything like it before. It's a language learning app, but it's it's not quite like Duolingo. It's a Chrome extension, right? And so it's it's working behind the scenes in the browser and it's replacing the words you're reading kind of live with whatever the target language vocabulary is that you're trying to learn. Is that basic? Do I basically have it down? Exactly. So if you go to install Toucan and you're reading New York Times or binge watching Netflix or going down Reddit rabbit holes, we serve you up with micro moments of learning. And what that might look like is if you're reading an article, the word coffee shows up. It'll show up as cafe instead or whatever your target language you're trying to learn. So through contextual immersion and just passively browsing, we're helping you learn a language uh, without even taking time out of your very busy day. So how did you get started uh, with Toucan? Where did the idea come from? So the initial insight and piece of nugget that we had is like we have... 20 plus years between the three of us co-founders working in consumer tech, mm -hmm. like the best tech companies in Los Angeles. And through that, we've all learned all about habit formation, consumer behavior, but really how hard it is to steal time out of people's very busy days mm -hmm. that even asking for 10 minutes is really hard to do because you're not just competing against friends, family, work, and school, mm -hmm. but also Netflix, Spotify, Instagram, Headspace, and everything in between that we decided with Toucan, like, let's not even try to play that game mm -hmm. because we're probably not going to win it. So instead, let's layer on top of existing behaviors and meet people where they already are throughout the day. And that's how we landed on a browser extension as our first product vertical. Was it always going to be a language learning app? So language is really our first focus content vertical. Like we have this massive vision for Toucan. Like we want to eventually be the way where you can learn anything. And language itself could be a massive business and also mm -hmm. a massive opportunity. So we know we wanted to start there from day one, but long-term and future vision, we want you to be able to learn science or history or sports trivia with Toucan, as well as like different product verticals. So still like laser focused on web right now, but eventually what does this look like on mobile? Layered on top of the most popular social apps, messaging apps, browsing activity there, even in the physical world with say AR glasses, like mm -hmm. a snap spectacle or a Google glass where you're walking in the physical world, you see a subway station sign or a restaurant menu and that triggers micro modes of learning. How would it work on mobile? Do the platforms allow you to have like an overlay similar to the, what you're able to do with a Chrome extension? So mobile is a little bit more tricky, which is why we're going after browser mm -hmm. first, because mobile we would have to do one by one partnership. Right. But a lot of um, the founders on our cap table happen to be founders of massive mobile apps, but browser extensions are also a thing and will be in the future. So we'll be able to tackle browsing activity and Android versus, um, the iOS systems are a little bit more open and flexible. Mm -hmm. So that will probably be our path into mobile first. So it sounds like the, the team came before the idea in this case. How did you get the team together and, and who's on it? Yeah, so Toucan is the fourth company I've attempted to start. Uh, so I have three failures under my belt already. And that's really how I learned like team is number one. Mm -hmm. Like I don't just have one co-founder, I have two co-founders who are absolutely insanely talented and way smarter than I am. Um, but it's because I've learned how important having co-founders are. And these are two amazing individuals that I've worked with before. So Brandon, who's leading product for us, was with me at Headspace. We joined really early and helped scale that company together for like, known him over seven years now and then sean was within science incubator with me and then we also joined fair right before softbank injected a, a mere 350 million dollars into that company scaled that rocket ship together and so we've already been in these high growth tech companies knowing how each other work in these 
crazy stressful environments and we have, happen to have really complementary skill sets. I didn't realize you were behind Headspace as well. Were you, were you also the founder there? Or... So not the founder, no. Um, but Rich, the founder and CEO, is an investor in Toucan. Gotcha. Uh, me and Brandon joined around 20 employees, and there wasn't yet a thousand meditation apps out there yeah. at that point. And so we had the amazing opportunity to, how do we scale this thing? How do we get this to mar- mass market? How do we get this part of pop culture? And my role there was really distribution. Um, so worked on a lot of amazing partnerships, like working with Spotify to become their first ever bundle partner, mm-hmm. as well as all of our airline partnerships, getting our content into every in-flight entertainment console. So how did the idea come about to tackle um, education, specifically language learning? Was that the idea from the beginning? Was there a process to get there? Yeah. So we were trying to scratch our own itch. Like I've always been excited about learning languages. Mm-hmm. Like I took Spanish for 12 years in school, but all I have to show for it is Donde esta la biblioteca, mm-hmm. which like, where is the library is not that useful. And how is that the only thing I remember out of all of those years? Um, now I speak Portuguese fluently and I taught myself through uh, YouTube videos and like library books. But finding time out of our days to keep learning and keep learning languages mm-hmm. was near impossible for us. They're like, there must be a better way. Like, let's start testing different ideas. And the first version of Toucan was so ugly. It was beautiful. If you could imagine the word the being translated every single time on your page, like terrible user experience, but we just wanted to see is there even some magic here mm-hmm. of layering on top of existing behaviors and meeting people where they already are? So what was the first like launched version of Toucan? So exactly what I mentioned. Mm-hmm. The Everywhere. being translated hundreds of times everywhere into Spanish. The so one word translated back and forth. Um, and then we got in front of people in coffee shops, mm-hmm. had them install it instantly. It's like, ask them questions. What do you think? Is there something here? And they were getting excited about just that terrible user experience. We're like, okay, this is interesting. It's worth creating a bunch of more hypotheses, proving things right or wrong and iterating off of that. So for context, how long ago was this? How long has Toucan been around so far? Toucan's been around for a little more than a year and a half now. And how yeah. many users are we talking about now in terms of like Chrome extension yeah. installs? So most of that time has been just the three of us co-founders building, iterating, mm-hmm. um, as well as kind of heads down, not really trying to scale a lot, except for the last few months. And we've been growing 100% month over month, completely organically, no paid acquisition. Mm-hmm. And we're close to 30,000 active users right now. That's great. So has it been um, like person to person at coffee shops the whole way, or have you discovered some other <laughs> ways to acquire customers? So definitely in the beginning, especially as we were iterating to making sure we're building something people really love, Mm. like getting that instant feedback before we started scaling, because we didn't want to scale something that just had a leaky bucket and people were just churning out of. And now we've refined our processes. So not just coffee shops, but how instead of getting 10 users at a time, we can get 100 users at a time, 1,000 users. Now I'm looking to 10,000, 100,000. How do we acquire more and more people? Mm. Um, so we've launched one key distribution playbook that has been working so well for us. We call it Own the Word. And as you experience Toucan, you see a lot of these words and phrases translated in line. We decided that's a really interesting opportunity to give people a piece of the dictionary, make them feel invested and excited about their learning process and then also our product. Mm-hmm. And so if you hover over the word science, you'll see that Bill Nye owns that word. If you hover over coffee, you'll see that Morning Brew newsletter owns that word. And for us, anytime that someone purchases a word, we give them a bespoke URL Mm -hmm. that then they get and they can share across social media, email, text messages, wherever they want, showing that they own the word, which then gives us so many more eyeballs and users into Toucan. So has that been the primary driver of this like 100% month over month growth so far? So I would say it's about 50% of our growth. The other percent of our growth has really been word of mouth. Mm. The moment someone knows that Toucan exists, because nothing like this has been out there before, so people don't even know to look at it, 
they tell everyone they know, their friends, family, strangers. There's so much love on Twitter for us because they're having eight hours a day of these magic moments mm -hmm. and this constant reminder of how great this experience is that then they want to share it with other people. That's actually how I um, came into like your circle of influence as well. A friend said, hey, check out this cool app. I think you'd like it. I know you study languages. I said, oh, this is pretty interesting. Let's see who's behind this. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And that's how so many of our users come. And it's really great to see too that people are even recommending us to us to other people. And I think that's really rare, not just for consumer apps, but specifically ed tech mm. apps, like this type of love. It seems like Duolingo has a, a similar kind of, well, one, like kind of like a friendly go lucky brand and also seems to have similar like word of mouth power where I think like I'm an internet nerd. So I've learned about Duolingo from like Hacker News like 10 years ago, but I hear about it more and more from like friends and family. They talk about Duolingo. It's like a word people know. Um, and to launch yeah. and a year and a half later seem to have like a similar word of mouth potential is pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's super exciting, especially because they just announced um, the recent round of funding now valued at $2.4 billion, which is incredible. Yeah. And when we're looking at the space, we're looking, how can we partner with this massive player as well as other mobile apps, mm -hmm. plus tutor marketplaces or textbook companies? Because from our perspective, like we want to pair that progression, whatever people are doing to take time out of their day, mm -hmm. let's now pair that with Toucan as they're browsing, as they're doing other things. How do you, how would you envision like say a Duolingo integration with Toucan? What would that look like? So ideal integration and probably like a V1 of this would be like co-branded landing page that people land at. Mm -hmm. um, you enter your Duolingo username. And now as you're going about, we're able to pull progression that you've accomplished that day, that week, that month, and prioritize that and flag the words that you're learning and pairing between both experiences. Mm -hmm. And so you're on New York Times, you're seeing some of those vocabularies that you're also doing offline in these exercises on your mobile device. Are you worried about Duolingo seeing like, oh, people like Toucan, we can build a similar Chrome extension, let's put a team of 10 on this and launch it next month? That gives us so many new eyeballs that this is a real market mm -hmm. and a new product. And that also makes us best friends with every other player in the in the arena, in the area. And so honestly, that would just legitimize everything that we're doing mm -hmm. and also flood so many people to the Chrome store. And that gives us a huge lift on distribution. Actually, it's rising tide. And our full team is 100% focused on, on this augmented layer mm -hmm. versus if any uh, one coming into the space as far as a big legacy company, they most likely just have a PM and a team of engineers versus like an entire company rallying around this real vision. How big is, so how big is the entire um, Join Toucan team right now? Yeah, so we just scaled the engineering team a bit more. So still lean, but bigger at 12 full-time employees. And how many of those are engineers? Seven of the 12. Seven of and over half of those engineers are the OG Headspace team that worked with mm. us previously. Is the 12 including the three co-founders? One of them, yeah. Okay. Sean. I am also a pseudo engineer, but I don't count myself. So seven plus seven engineers plus three co-founders plus like a designer or a PM or something along those lines. Exactly. An awesome designer and then someone to help on distribution with me. And it seems like you guys have probably raised money in a, a fair amount to have 12 full time engineers. How much money have you guys raised so far? Yeah. So we've raised $3.5 million to date. Um, GSB Ventures, who's really world-class in all things ed tech, is our lead investor. They have Masterclass, Coursera, Class Dojo, you name it, mm. they have it. Um, we have a lot of amazing firms like Wonder Ventures and Halogen Ventures based in Los Angeles, as well as Golden Ventures based in Canada. And then a lot of great founders backing us. So the founder of Honey, founder of GoGuardian to massive extensions, like founder of Headspace and Prey, two of our old bosses coming in, as well as Google's chief education officer, who's been there the past 15 years, and Bumble's chief marketing officer. And then most recently, Baron Davis, who's a two-time MBA author, as well as 
uh, Jeff Wiener, LinkedIn CEO, have both come on as investors as well, which is like so exciting to see the wide range of types of people mm-hmm. that want to come support our mission and what we're building. That's quite the like consumer product pedigree. Um, Thanks. So what what's the plan now for continued growth? Is it double down on the buying words? Are there new strategies that, that you want to try soon? Yeah, so there's so many playbooks we want to keep unlocking. So we'll have own the word, keep running, greasing that. Mm-hmm. The next big mover we're looking at is we somewhat hit on it a little bit, but these learning accelerator partners, how do we work with these massive players in the market, whether it's mobile apps, textbook companies, tutor marketplaces to accelerate what people are doing um, in person on their own time with Toucan as they're browsing. And so these are a lot of the conversations that we're already having that we're excited about and that we'll hopefully be launching starting in January. Is the plan to go deeper on language first or is to go broader on like different education verticals? Yeah, so like leads are focused on languages. Like we want this and Toucan to be world class on the language learning side before we start going after other content verticals, especially like small company, limited resource, Mm -hmm. and even language again is massive opportunity of how much value we could bring to users. So staying focused, but as we look at like, how does this become an iconic company over the next 10, 20, 30 years, that's where other education content verticals might come in. So an ideal partner for you right now would be somebody like a Pimsleur or Rosetta Stone or something like this? Yeah, totally. What do you think is the the timeline for, for these kind of partnerships? Yeah, um, so already active conversations looking as early as January cool. to start launching some. And those are like very big needle mover jumping from 30,000 active users to 100,000 to a million. How would it look like? So I'm not sure to what extent like um, Pimsleur, whoever, are are digitized now. Are you looking to partner with people who are strictly like textbooks or digital? And how would those partnerships look on like um, from like a user perspective? Yeah, so agnostic really. Uh, We talked about what a flow might look like with a mobile app. Mm -hmm. Uh, what that might look like with a textbook company is people have lessons and if that's paired with that week, what are the students learning in classroom? Now that's getting prioritized on their Chromebook because I never had a Chromebook in school, but now Google is giving Chromebooks out to K-12 university students. And so we can pair that with their browsing on Chromebooks, but also at home. So that vocabulary lessons you're getting from the textbook, now you're not only learning it for that week, Mm -hmm. But towards the end of the year, when you might have forgotten lessons from way back when, after you got A's on those tests, Mm -hmm. like you are being reminded and remembered and having that rekindled in your brain. uh, So you really remember that material long term. And then you've got all the textbook readers too downloading the app, which brings them into your own whole ecosystem. Um, Would you also be like promoting the book on Toucan as well? Be like, hey, these are our partners. We recommend these like textbooks. Yeah, so we're looking at, okay, how do we pair progression? Is there a way to do bundle partnerships? Mm -hmm. Is there a way to do like rev share partnerships where they're sending people our way, but we're also sending people their way? Like there is a lot of fun things we can test out and try to your point. Um, So back to the like buying a word thing, because I think that's pretty interesting. First, like you've been calling it a playbook. Does that mean like you found inspiration for this from somewhere else? Or is this something you guys brainstormed and came up with? just internally so call it a playbook just because we have like internal docs on exactly how we can execute Mm -hmm. and just keep greasing the wheel so that's repeatable because i think that's the most important thing with these big distribution channels how do you keep repeating it over and over again and how can i create it in partnership with my team but then Mm -hmm. hand it off to someone else on the team to really be the owner of it and have it continue going on in the lifetime of toucan but I and us, like as a founding team, have never seen anyone do something like this before. And so it was us really thinking, how can we use the product to dr- drive distribution? Mm-hmm. And honestly, from my background in partnerships, like this is a partnership heaven. There are so many cool things that you can do, whether it's reaching out to record labels to get all of their musicians to own words, mm-hmm. to help them promote their own music, working with celebs that are trying to work on new initiatives, nonprofits that want to raise awareness of what they're doing, 
to like micro influencers to even just our own users like there's so many different things that we can do with own the word that's pretty clever you've basically convinced all these partners to pay you to help you market which is awesome <laughs> yeah they're helping they're paying us for our own distribution which is incredible um how do these partnership conversations go is there any kind of inbound yet or is it all like reaching out to to potential like word buyers yeah so on the on the word side it's honestly a mix of inbound outbound mm -hmm. um on the outbound side it's pretty fun because i almost consider myself a professional stalker but in the least creepy way possible um i have so much fun reaching out to people and thinking more mm -hmm. creatively and why it's 50 50 right now is a lot of people don't know who can exist right now right, right? As we become more mainstream, bigger, more users are using the product, like they'll one know that we even exist and that own the word is even a thing. Mm -hmm. And so there's still a lot of education piece on why we have to do outbound for it. So how much does it cost to for me to buy a word right now? Like I want to own the word um, indie. Yeah. <laughs> how much does it cost me to buy it? I love it. Let's make that happen too. I'm happy to give that to you after this as well. Um, but only 99 cents per week, mm -hmm. but we've set it up in a way where we actually want churn, which is not normal for a weekly subscription. You usually want to keep and retain the, those subscribers, but for us, we're using it as growth. Mm -hmm. And so if you own the word indie, you're going to share it out on social, all your friends. But after you do that, that those first few times, you're probably not going to do it again. Mm -hmm. And so we want that word back in mm -hmm. our dictionary for someone else to be able to own it and share it out to their other network. And then since it's is really cheap as well. So do you give like stats on like about how many times that word is going to get translated? So not yet, but as you can imagine, there's so many things that you could do, mm -hmm. especially if we wanted this to be like a real lead gen revenue acquisition channel for other people because you can even include an optional url so if someone hovers over indie clicks into your name we can link them over to your website or whatever cta you want people to go to yeah. and so at some point we can start giving metrics to people on how often it's showing up what the click through rate over to their site is and it can get as complicated as we potentially want because kind of a Google AdWords layered on top of Google for every website domain possible. How many words have been rented so far? I guess it's probably better than some. Over 10,000 have been purchased thus far. Wow. So all, how do you get, so you said of almost half of that is from outreach. So you've reached out to 5,000 different companies to get them to buy a word? So some people buy more than one oh, word okay. too. Yeah, that was, that makes more sense just for the scale of it, because um, it sounds yeah. like your tech, your outreach technique sounds pretty um, like targeted. Like you're trying to, like you said, you're a semi professional stalker in the best way. So that <laughs> that says to me like a lot of work per word that is only cost like ninety nine cents each. But so are you selling like yeah. a bundle of like five hundred words or a thousand words to a company? The other thing too to think of is like reaching out to a partner like uh, Republic Records. Mm -hmm. They have access to so many people, right? That would want to own words. And so even though you're going to one person, you're getting access to a lot of potential people that right. way. And so that's how a lot of our outbound is structured, like really going beyond the one-to-one, -one, mm -hmm. but who's the one to get you 500, get you a thousand, potentially more. So you and we've now we've automated it all via tech. So even though we're outreaching to someone, they can actually go through the whole process themselves. So do you go to like a Universal or a Mad Dog Records, whoever, and say like, hey, buy like a thousand dollars worth of like word weeks from us and then you can like distribute them as you like? So we're not doing B2B sales, mm -hmm. sales like, like that right mm -hmm. now. At some point we could. Like if we really want this to be monetization for us, it's really about growth. Oh, growth. And so it's letting people know that it exists like having them go through the flow themselves and really like building that relationship, asking them questions. Like at some point, if we wanted to do like these massive B2B partnerships on the sales side to really have this revenue versus growth, like totally, we would definitely do that. That makes sense. So what's happening now is you go to them, you say, hey, we have this cool thing. And then they send it out to all of their like 500 or 1000 artists 
and then you have some kind of exactly. automated flow from there where those people can purchase words? Yeah, just join toucan.com slash own dash the dash word, mm. and it's completely automated now. And so their teams go through the flows, they buy some for them personally, for like their friends to test it out, then the artists buy words or whoever the partners are. And so as these words are being purchased too, they're getting the URLs that they're sharing to network, people are clicking on those landing page and then other people are getting those words. So it's a lot of like this organic, nice little flywheel happening um, that even if one person transacts, we're getting eyeballs for other people to own words as well. Oh, that's awesome. I really like that strategy. Um, and you're in a unique position too, where I'm not sure how easy it would, it wouldn't be that easy to copy your exact strategy. It'd be more like uh, you'd have to apply the same kind of thinking to whatever the specific business is that you're working on. Um, but unless you are also doing something that's at that much in people's faces as like translating words on a page, it was maybe not that easy to, to replicate. Um, what are the like what are your plans next for for the language learning vertical like beyond just like partnerships as far as like the app itself what's what's coming up yeah so a few things one we're really excited about progression mm. but almost having it as magical through that experience on a browser so right now we we mentioned like coffee as an example might show up, be translated in line to cafe. Mm -hmm. We start to understand you're, you're really like grasping that word. We want to then share, like show you hot coffees. So to be able to introduce gender and pluralization just through you naturally browsing. Then eventually, once you understand that collocation, like those two types of words together, mm -hmm. we want to give you a phrase so you can understand verb conjugation, grammar, and start naturally picking that up. In addition to that, We've launched our first portal for these like deeper exercises. So if you go to any page on Wikipedia, it'll prompt you to be like, hey, you want to like play a game? You want to test your knowledge? Click it and you have a mini game or quiz you can engage with. And we want to start integrating more of these portals across as you're browsing. So imagine you're on Facebook newsfeed, scrolling, see a bunch of your friends post, their dogs, we can overtake one of those posts and give you a toucan mini game to engage with. Or you're on YouTube watching a bunch of music videos and advertisement starts playing. We can, instead of showing you that ad, give you a quiz to engage with instead. So our positive spin on ad blocker. Yeah, that's cool. I was just checking out the like Wikipedia portal. Now, whoa, it's really taken over the page. Okay, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, I guess that's the magic of the Chrome extensions. You can really be tightly integrated into like these bigger websites by just tacking their their uh, their DOM in the browser. Yeah, we can manipulate the page and then um, also pair it with context, which we haven't yet. But say you're reading an article about sports. Now the vocabulary we're testing you on can be related to sports. And that could be based off the context of the page or even the domain, like you're on ESPN.com. Yeah, I really like these um, uh, the the portal idea. I feel like it takes it uh, much farther in terms of it being like a fully fledged language learning experience. Now it's turned your whole well it should be procrastinating time on the internet into now <laughs> language study to a deeper level. Yeah, and it really also helps people realize how much they're learning with Toucan mm -hmm. because. It is so like ubiquitous. You're barely noticing it, almost subconscious, but you're learning so much. And we can see that on our back end side, but how do we reflect all that value back to our users? And this is one of the ways where like we're trained through education of like 20 plus years going to school. Like you need quizzes and mini games and tests and exercises and flashcards to learn. Mm -hmm. But actually we know that's not the best way to learn. The best way to learn a language is through this contextual immersion, but there's still that user expectation. And also uh, we need a way to reflect value back to that user. Like this is the gold standard to learn, but like, look how much you're learning. Mm -hmm. And those can be great ways to do that. So how do you measure language learning? Yeah. So 
stay with me for a second because it might sound like one plus one equals potatoes. But if you dig into all of the pedagogy white papers around second language acquisition, mm -hmm. it all talks about contextual immersion on top of whatever you love. It's why people tell you go watch Friends with French subtitles or read Harry Potter in Spanish and why back in the day we would all change our phones or our Facebook news feeds completely to one language, like get that immersion. But it needs to be comprehensible enough for you to still go about your day and really be able to soak in the context to help your brain figure out what is happening, mm -hmm. which is why these words, phrases, um, and small sentences are perfect, like really the best way to learn. And which is why we've also used this technique, which can, um, so not only amazing from the consumer behavior side, but amazing from a second language acquisition side. And the pedagogy says, you need to see a word within context 20 times. Like that seems crazy to be able to only need to see it 20 times within context for you to be able to pick that vocabulary from your brain if you needed to use it in a speaking situation. And so we've opt that to around 100 times just because of the nature of browsing, but we're seeing that this actually holds true. So once, so you can measure like, okay, we've shown this user this word 100 times in context. And at that point, we can pretty safely assume that they've learned it. And then you can put a check next to that. It, Exactly. And users can also indicate to us, like, we'll already know on our back end before someone even gets tested if they'll answer that correctly, mm -hmm. if they really know it. But users still want to be able to test their knowledge. And also, we have this I know this feature where they can tell us and tell Toucan, like, I got this. I know that concept already. One thing I'm interested in from the like language learner perspective is if I'm learning these foreign words in the context of English, is my brain going to store that in the same place in my brain as English, or is it going to build like a this separate like foreign language tree for this language? Like, do I come away with <laughs> learning all of these like foreign synonyms as English words, or am I actually like learning the second language? Can I speak in only those those words? Yeah, so definitely the second language. Like, you are able to recall that from your brain based off of all these different contexts. And what's so cool is like the, wa the word water mm -hmm. might show up, water in the bathtub, water in the ocean. Like that helps steer that concept agua into your mind even better when you need to go recall it, even if there is uh, English words or whatever your native language around that, that word or phrase. Does the app like kind of build up over time to where eventually it's translating the whole page or is it always like individual words in context? It will always be comprehensible enough, but our goal is to have you like download Toucan, have things like sprinkled here and there. Mm -hmm. And by the time you're like a few months in, it's 70% translated, 80% translated. Like we want you to visually see like, this is so cool. Like I'm actually understanding most of my page, but again, the, the pedagogy around comprehensible contextual immersion, mm -hmm. like, 100% is still a lot for people when they're learning and it, it we're on top of people's workflows on top of like their daily activities where we have to be really mindful about that. Is that how it works now? Or is that the future vision for that? A little bit more on the future side, probably in the next few months now that we have some more engineering firepower. Nice. Um, so like how much of a page can be will be translated at this point maximum to can or is it or are we still at the individual words stage so we're at words and collocations which means two words together and so now we're starting to integrate a lot of machine learning that we didn't necessarily do that before mm -hmm. to one help improve the accuracy side of these translations because words are so complicated. The word orange could mean yeah. a fruit or a color. And so how do we, with 100% accuracy, based off of the context of that sentence and page, understand which one it should be? Mm. And then not only on the accuracy side, but also helping with the density side, right? Of going from these one word to two words. And then the next step is going from the two words to the, to the small phrase, probably three words together, four words. Makes sense. And then over a few months, we get hopefully kind of keeping pace with the current users learning. We get a more and more translated page. 
Exactly. Like the constant feedback for from our users is they want more. Mm -hmm. Like they want more translations. They want more ways to engage with Toucan, which is amazing because our biggest like question mark starting out was, are we going to disrupt to like our users too much because we're on top of browser. Mm -hmm. And if you look at any existing extension, right, um, here, uh, Grammarly is wherever you're typing. Honey's just at checkout. We are this ever present consistent buddy overlaying the web. And even though we're not necessarily asking you to do a new habit, mm -hmm. we are changing user behavior because we may be forever changing how people are browsing as this augmented layer. Um, it's a pretty cool model. Like uh, Loom followed a similar pathway where they started as a Chrome extension and just kind of slipped into the kind of patterns people already had with using Chrome extensions and they were already in the browser. And then over time they hit some limits there and had to move to a, um, a desktop app in order to get past those limitations. Do you see like a similar feature for Toucan where you're eventually more of a desktop app than a Chrome extension? Are there things that Chrome extensions can do that desktop apps wouldn't be able to do for you, for example? So for what we're trying to accomplish, like contextual immersion, the overlay is gold, mm -hmm. right? Like we want people to, to read as much as possible on top of what they already love, which means that's Medium, Twitter, Facebook, Netflix, like whatever people are excited about. And we want to be that layer on top of. So for us and our perspective and really the entire thesis of Toucan, it's like we get so much benefit being that overlay mm -hmm. versus sending people to a standalone Toucan experience. That makes sense. Yeah, it's a, it's a cool, a really cool thing, just like this invisible app layer. Well, it's not invisible. People see it's Toucan, but they never had to install something on their desktop. They never have to open it up again once it's installed. Um, are people, what are like churn, what is churn like for you? Are people staying with Toucan? Is there a significant number that get frustrated and leave? No, so our retention is world class, um, which it almost feels like we're cheating, mm. but I think that's why our thesis works. If you install Toucan, you stay around, and not only you stay around, you keep learning, which is so incredible because if you look at the education space, there's so many products where you pay a hundred dollars, you pay a thousand dollars and you never open it again. You, <laughs> the CD-ROM stays in the box. Like you don't use it because finding time is hard to do. And what we're seeing with Toucan, people not only install us, keep us in our browser, but they keep learning, which if you just think about the potential ripple effects of people learning every single day, like we're super excited about that. Right now, it's completely free, which it's definitely got to be helpful with the acquisition. Do you have a, like a vision for like a pro version or a paid version of, of Toucan? Yeah, okay. so technically we do have a premium version right Already. now, but you have to dig to find it. And that's why I'm not surprised that you did not see it, but people are still finding it and transacting. But this engineering sprint, as we're talking right now, we're working on our premium subscription and really optimizing it and figuring out, we'll start testing where that threshold is of where we put that pay sub wall in. Like most of Toucan Stay will, will be on that free side. Mm -hmm. So you can have that really great experience, but where people start asking for more and like maybe it's around density of like having a 100% a density level or 70 to 100% density level, or maybe it's if they want unlimited mini games, like where is that where people want more that then we can put that sub wall um, so we can really be a sustainable business long-term. Nice. Yeah, I was just able to find it, but it was definitely a digging <laughs> in order. If I didn't yeah. know that it existed, I wouldn't have gone looking in the first place. Yeah. And to your point too, it's really our intention because we wanted to make sure we nailed retention, nailed engagement, and continue to build a product that people love. So the more people being able to use all aspects of Toucan, the better for us mm -hmm. really being able to do that. That makes sense. Um, do you have like an inkling of the what people are going to be willing, willing to pay for? Is there any feedback you're getting so far from the users on that, on that front? So we'll be doing a lot of testing around that because if you look at Toucan, there is no obvious comps for us. Like if you look in the extension space, 
premium subscription, like there is Grammarly, but them and Toucan, mm -hmm. like totally different products. And then language learning, like we can look at mobile apps, but there isn't really an extension to Compass to either. But most of the apps that exist are somewhere between 12 to $20 a month. And so where does Toucan lie either below that or around that? We'll start like A-B testing to really figure that out. Um, back to like language learning pedagogy. Uh, are, is Toucan, does Toucan have a strategy for teaching grammar as well as vocabulary? Yeah, for sure. So that's where some of these largest phrases and small sentences come into play. Mm -hmm. So you can naturally soak up like verb conjugations, grammar, sentence structure around that. Also our portals allow us to do some more of these like complex teaching exercises, mm -hmm. flashcards, like showing off techniques, um, maybe even just explaining different things that help you learn better, mm -hmm. um, just for more like complex things versus just like words, you know, and really explaining things to our users. That makes sense. It seems like that, uh, like on one hand, you can treat all grammar as flat if you wanted to, right? Like, say, we'll learn in context vocabulary words and just kind of hide the fact that with like even more context, you could eventually show every someone every conjugation of the word to eat in Spanish, for example, right? In all these different contexts. And eventually yeah. they would pick up like, oh, I eat is yo como y you eat comes or whatever exactly like people our brains are so magical we naturally pick up what these pattern phrases are mm -hmm. like what is a, a typical structure look like between like two common words or a common phrase that then we can input and replace different vocabulary um so we then start to understand okay the natural structure of that language that we're trying to learn how long for like a language like a romance language, what it does it take for someone to like learn a thousand words or learn the whole language using the Toucan method? This is the magic question we're working on answering right now. So I don't have that, that answer for you, mm -hmm. but I will have it hopefully soon um, because we really want to figure that out. And not only that, but how quickly can we progress people to get to the point of velocity? And we're going to be leveraging some more meta progression probably around the like suffer level, which is quite naturally like the international standard of like, are you an A1, A2, B1, B2? Like how can we pair that with Toucan um, of like how dense is your vocabulary now that you've been using this product and mm -hmm. how quickly can we get people to different parts of that progression? That'd be a really, a really killer stat to be able to say, um like one month to core 1000 vocabulary or something like that and to also show not just how long it takes but like what percentage of people stick around with toucan to like some um suffer level versus learning method x like if you can say like ah oh, toucan is very low churn people can't help but learn and so yes it still takes two years to learn this language but 90 percent of toucan users make it would be equally awesome or if, I think even way cooler even than like oh we did it 20% faster would be we did it with 80% less churn through to like I love knowledge. that and the other cool piece of that too is like even if it might take slightly longer you are still retaining that knowledge long term because it's the repetition and what gets a lot of people is that repetition of that same flashcard over and over again is so boring mm. that getting people to do that is hard but we're almost doing the flashcards but in your browsing activity and it's so different every time that it still seems fun um so romance languages are like a germanic language or i guess any like the pan indo-european spheres so like even like hindi and stuff is one thing because you get a lot for free with those languages as far as like sentence structure um have you guys looked into what it's going to take to do like an entirely different uh, language family like arabic or like chinese or something like that yeah so the next two languages that we'll be launching first will be korean mm. which will go live before the holidays and then japanese following right behind that quickly 
So there's a lot of research that had to go into like figuring out how does this make sense? Like, can it even make sense? Mm -hmm. um, the third language we're exploring was Russian and we like dove fairly deep into it, but realized like we actually need to do a little bit more work on it before we could just because of the structure of that language, mm. right? And like you mentioned Arabic, that's also one top of our list. There's like a lot of intricacies that goes into the language that doesn't pair easily with just how we're doing with the other romance languages. And so like there's a lot of research that we do and take into consideration even choosing which language to launch next. So and that like line of thinking how did you come to like korean and japanese as your next targets yeah so there's like a lot of stats around what languages people are trying to learn um just pure like popularity mm -hmm. like the big needle mover that we really have top of our list but didn't prioritize quite yet is um english like these languages that we have left mm. back to, to English and vice versa, we're kind of taking uh, a step back to do that. And so for us, it was like, okay, what's next besides English? That's still super high in priority popularity that we can execute and execute well through our method um, with Toucan. Yeah, English is huge. I'm pretty sure that's the biggest language learning market by far is in English. Um, so what were the factors then that gave you like Korean and Japanese? Is that the, is that, are those like the most sought after on by language learners right now? Language learners are current users, new users mm. interested in learning to can like English is for sure um, even higher than those two. Mm -hmm. But from us, it's an easier engineering list to launch still um, English back to other languages versus other languages back to English. Mm. So once we have a few more engineering resources under our belt, like we'll definitely be attacking that. Um, I feel like Japanese in particular is a can of worms because not only are you trying to figure out the translation, you also have to figure out which of their like three writing systems they're going to use, right? And if they're using the symbolic kanji, then which of the several kanji variants, and also if you're trying to still provide pronunciation, um, it's not that easy to, to read from a single kanji out of context what the correct pronunciation of that is like either. What What is kind of the yep. work behind that? Do you think those are solvable problems right now, or are you planning to do them like one at a time? You are spot on. It becomes so fun and lots of different <laughs> problems emerge, right? With a lot of different um, languages across the board. And so for us, it's really like testing. Like we want to launch um, a version of Japanese that then we can get users feedback on. Like what's working, what's not, what do they want access mm. to? And so we'll be doing a few different variations while we're, we're rolling out and really just like slapping a beta sticker on it to give like Toucan some forgiveness yeah. as we're testing out. But like we need to, to try because it's a massive language that people want to learn that we want to give people access to. Yeah, I could almost foresee like needing an entire custom app for Japanese just because the complexity involved and kind of the number of steps you have to take in order to get to being able to sound out a word like you can in, in French. Like Korean, maybe through like an hour long course, you could teach the alphabet. Their alphabet looks crazy from like an English uh, speaker only perspective is not maybe actually that hard for someone to learn versus like Japanese could take months to years. I think it's a really good point and I think it's actually it ties into one of the assumptions um, based off of learnings of talking to all of our users that people coming to use Toucan we really are not the first place they've ever tried to learn a language mm. right like they have most likely I at least spent some time using an app, taking a class in person, doing something else. And they have some idea concept of that language, like whether that's the alphabet, whether it's how like pronunciation works in general, like mm -hmm. some sort of base knowledge that they're coming into Toucan, like, okay, I might still be at a super basic level, but I have some general understanding how the heck this language is supposed to work. Is there an ideal like language level that a new Toucan user would be at that you're, that you're trying to target? So I think some sort of basic level 
um, and that's just naturally who we've been getting. I, mm-hmm. I don't think we've had anyone who's, except for some people that are very advanced in a specific language, came to Toucan and like, actually, we I want to try a different language and kind of even polyglots that bounce between different languages mm-hmm. that they're trying to learn as they're using Toucan, but like really like based off of how we're leveraging some basic understanding. At some point, as we have these different portals, we can really go to like, round zero day one you've never touched this language before let's teach you but there's just so much opportunity for people that have tried to learn a language before and since human communication is so essential for all of us like most likely someone has had some type of experience learning any kind of language before yeah it's kind of to your your story at the very beginning of studying spanish for however long and not really coming away with anything just like most language learners both have some context and are also overwhelmingly still beginners. Yep, totally. Even if they spent years doing Even it. Even if they spent years doing it. Yeah, there's, there's um, language instruction in school. It tends to be pretty terrible as far as like people actually learning the language to any level of proficiency, at least in, in the American education system that I've witnessed. For sure. Um, and also the... To your point about context, um, that kind of brings it back to you, the pursuit of like partnerships, right? Because if you can partner with a language learning, some other language learning app or textbook that has already taught them, like the Korean alphabet or whatever, that's work you don't have to do educating your users. They come in with that knowledge, ready to use Toucan to its fullest potential. Exactly. And you can imagine a world where maybe there's Toucan plus a mobile app plus a tutor marketplace plus textbooks, like mm. all bundled together. And now it's like the end-to-end spectrum of anything that you might need to learn that specific language. Yeah. Yeah, I guess Toucan with just like a referral code to italki is already like a pretty big business. (laughs) You get some percentage of 30,000 downloads to also um, buy italki. That's like a decent revenue stream. Mm -hmm, For sure. And we'll keep growing, right? Right. Yeah. 100% month over month um, is pretty great. (laughs) Pretty great growth. I think uh, pretty much anybody would love to have that. Um, What is we're excited by it. And we're hoping to like, keep it going. I'm also fairly competitive in general. um, So we're excited to like, keep blowing those numbers out. Do you think you can push it past 100%? I hope so. that. <laughs> I'm determined. I think we can do it. After this call, I already believe in you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I appreciate that. Yeah, I think uh, your competitive drive uh, comes through clearly. And um, it's pretty you. obvious that the team has put a lot of thought into what you can, can be now and should be in the future already. Um, it seems like there's a pretty clear path forward. Um, who knows to how to what extents, but at least to grow significantly larger than it is right now it seems yeah. like there's a lot of untapped potential still a lot of momentum yeah I, yeah totally agree with you like you can just like, if you're really honest with yourself as a founder like you can tell if you're hitting on something and if there's some magic especially having a lot of fail- failures now under my belt and also being in other tech companies that had this magic that so you can feel within toucan and our team and talking to our users that there's there's something really magical here and we're really just at the, that beginning of the journey. A um, couple of questions to close us out on the hour. Um, first, what is like the grandest version of Toucan, the, the $10 billion idea? $10 billion idea, and really that iconic company like vision is we are one of five consumer tech products you're using every single day. And we're that ever present education layer, Mm -hmm. no matter what you're doing, whether you're browsing the web, whether you're using your mobile device, whether you're commuting, walking down the street, like we are a layer on top of everything that's helping you learn whatever you want to learn and doing it in the way that you learn best. So becoming the best personalized teacher for you. Awesome. And then advice for any new entrepreneurs in the uh, consumer space. Um, hands down, get started and launch while you're super embarrassed with the product. Like the first version of Tuka, I mentioned so ugly. It was beautiful. But when we had that 
the initial inkling of the idea, we pushed it live, mm-hmm. like put it up, got it out there, just started getting it in front of people. A lot of times we tried to perfect everything. Like there are so many things I want to improve with Toucan still that every time I'm like, oh, I wish that was live that live, but the product is never perfect. There are always things you want to improve on before you give it to people, mm-hmm. but it needs to get in people's hands to really understand is this something is there something there and also what feedback do they have because they might see things that are complete blind spots for you awesome any uh any parting words for us uh thank you so much for your time and really everyone um if you want to give toucan a go join toucan.com as anthony mentioned uh always open for feedback like Keep us posted on anything. And you can always find me on Twitter at Taylor underscore Neiman, N-I-E-M-A-N. Awesome. Taylor, thank you so much.